When most people think of Orlando, they typically think of just one thing. Which is a shame because the Central Florida area has a lot more to offer, like beautiful beaches, serene springs, and of course, skate parks. So if you've been following the channel for a little bit, you'll know that I recently just moved to downtown Orlando. And so that means my local skate park has also taken a change. No longer shall I be frequenting the dusty battlelands of Candyland Skate Park, but now I have the official skate park of Orlando as my local. It's pretty bittersweet to be leaving the Longwood, Florida area and not having Candyland as my local skate park because I have so many great memories there. I feel like it's less the skate park that you get drawn to. It's more about the people that you meet and you end up skating with and making friends with. And so that's the most difficult part for me. However, it is pretty exciting to be able to ride my bicycle just 15 minutes up the road to the Orlando skate park and we're gonna go and check that one out today. We made it here to the Orlando Skate Park. Let's take a look around, get warmed up, do some skating. So as the name would imply, the Orlando Skate Park is owned and run by the city of Orlando. However, it was designed by Site Design Group, which I'm looking at their website and they've done a number of skate parks all throughout the nation and even some international ones. They were the ones who did LES Skate Park and Encinitas Skate Park. So they've 
got some good reputation under their belt in terms of building skate parks. As far as Orlando Skate Park is concerned, this is a 26,000 square foot skate park and it's sectioned into three distinct categories. You've got the beginner section, then you've got like a flow course around the side and then the rest is mostly bowls. The beginner's course is perfect for kids that are just learning how to skate. It consists of a four foot tall half pipe, four foot tall banked hip, a mini hubba ledge and mini handrail. The beginner zone is what you saw me skating first and I think it's aptly named because a lot of the obstacles are, you know, fairly smaller. There's a really small four foot half pipe, which is perfect. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's where I learned how to drop in. Lots of stuff that's fun to tinker with, but you know, not anything too massively impressive or too super exciting to travel a long way for. As far as the flow courses go, it's yeah, pretty well named in that sense because you can't really travel across it. You know, you have to go in one way or the other. It's got a couple of uh, manual pads, a little pyramid section with like sort of an A-frame rail and then just some curvy ledges and out ledges, things like that. Uh, you probably get a little bit creative with some lines and things like that. I think that's what it's really probably pretty good for. And I'm going to get some follow filming done out there. At this current time, the end of the flow course is uh, just sort of ends with this quarter pipe that's falling apart that I almost feel like uh, it toppled over on me a couple of times as I was turning around on it. Uh, but then the rest of the skate park, the main central attraction I think for a lot of people are these really large and beautiful bowls. There's one main one that just sort of snakes all through the center of the park and I'm sure if I enjoyed skating bowls they would be amazing. But nevertheless I don't so much so there's that and I think that's the probably a good segue into my personal thoughts and opinions about the skate park I did do a good bit more skateboarding at that skate park so we're gonna check out some more of that although it did get quite hot as it usually does in Florida during the uh, relative summer I mean May is it's pretty much Florida summer You know, being the skate park, the official skate park of Orlando, you'd think that it, there'd be something more. Not that it's a bad skate park by any stretch of the imagination, in fact, it's actually a pretty good one. I'm sure lots of people, probably you guys watching it right now, think that, wow, this is a pretty incredible skate park. I'd love to go there, I'd love to skate it. And I do love skating it, but it does leave a little bit to be desired. And I think partially some of that is because I don't really like skating bowls or I don't skate bowls all too much. I'm mostly a street skater dude. So I can't really jive with two thirds of the skate park. But then, I think just some of the layout, the design is uh, just kind of awkward and kind of weird and I mean I love a good flat ledge and that flat ledge right there in the flow section is pretty beautiful and perfect to use as a manual pad or flat ledge. Little nooks and crannies that are pretty fun but I just wish there were, there were a bit more unique street obstacles I guess that's the gist of it. They seem to be adding more as time goes on you know I know little things pop up here and there kind of like how it is with my old previous local skate park um, <laughs> lots of new obstacles were popping up almost every single week and uh, I think that seems to be the running trend with Orlando Skate Park too. Overall it's just kind of meh, especially if they consider that Orlando is basically like the central hub of Florida. Most people, if they come to Florida, they're coming to Orlando for one reason or another. This skate park just really isn't that representative. I never really was too fond of it. It was always that other park, but a lot of people did skate it. But I think also, you know, it's, I guess it's one of those things. There's the history involved. It's iconic because of its vicinity to the downtown Orlando area and just some of the stuff that's gone down over the years. A lot of local skaters who are up and coming, who have um, just gone on to do greater things in skateboarding, 
were born out of that skate park. For those who really enjoy pool and vert skating, I mean, it has an 11 foot section of vert wall, which is, you know, if you can get up there and do some stuff on that, then you're probably gonna get noticed out in the industry. Like mostly transition, like 85% transition and 15% street, but probably say most skaters out there skate more street but besides that I'm still super thrilled super excited that I can ride my bicycle up the road uh, it's about a 10 or 15 minute ride on my bicycle and that's really exciting so definitely gonna be going there a lot more and you're gonna see more clips of that skate park in the future Let me know in the comment section below what you think of Orlando Skate Park. Would you like to skate it? If it was your local skate park, would you be happy? Would you be sad? I mean, your local is what your local is. And as I said earlier, it's less the skate park itself. It's less the obstacles and the layout and the design that usually ends up bringing you back. For me, the local skate park is an extension of your home. It's the place that you go frequently enough and you start to meet people you start to recognize faces every time you show up there's a couple of people there that you sort of start to know better and uh that can enhance your skateboarding experience altogether i'm your 400 subscriber i just subscribed <laughs> that's sick what the hell look at that <laughs> it, it's gonna take me a little bit to settle in to settle into the skate park to be able to to do those tricks that you're gonna start to see like you know you know you know the tricks like you know tail slides and the, the snow slides and the crooked grinds and more flip tricks because I don't think I really did any flip tricks I did you know a couple of mob kickflips up the step up but that's about it so you need to get more comfortable with the skate park more comfortable with the layout and the the flow and all that stuff and you know at this time I've spoken too much you've already clicked off the video anyway so uh, you guys see it I'm in the city now so you know, I got all the street spots out here, so really shouldn't be skating the skate parks anyway, because it's just, what are you doing with your life if you just skate in the skate parks when you're living in downtown the city? So I think that's probably the next video is going to be uh, downtown street skating in, in downtown Orlando. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to try and go out and get some street skating clips and hopefully I don't get beat up or mugged or kicked out too much stick around for that you know the best way to make sure that you see it is to subscribe it um, subscribe it to the spoot and uh, hit the like button because it's been hot it's been gross and disgusting and uh, you know I work hard to make these videos and you know it just if you want me to stop moaning and complaining then the best way to do that is to make sure you hit the like button but uh, probably the best way to help out this channel is to share this video with some friends Share this video with somebody you know that uh, has you've seen go to the Orlando skate park or somebody that lives in Orlando um, and you think that they could benefit from seeing this skate park in action. Uh, share this with uh, your grandma because she probably would be thinking it's pretty cool because um, she lives down here because you know she retired and she came down to the heat so that her bones don't hurt so much in the winter time. And you know share this with Bill Fredo down the road because his pasta is not getting any better unless he sees some skateboarding. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So keep on spooting until then. Until then. Un until. Until tomorrow. It's city living. Check it out. Check it out. It's city living. Pizza.